Hello and welcome to Career Launcher. Through this video, 42 days to CAT, I'm going to take you through three questions of geometry. And geometry is one area that I believe that, you know, typically a lot of people have a lot of fear about and start leaving the question, looking at it. If it is geometry, hai to chhod do. but believe me, for async geometry, it is not the theorems or not all the theorems that are there that you need to really understand. It is typically the use of Pythagoras theorem that will probably suffice for you to understand and answer many of these questions. And for that, I have picked three questions from the countdown cat eight that is, you know, going to uh, end only today. 46 countdown cat eight. A regular octagon is formed by cutting an isosceles right angle triangle from each of the corners of a square. So there is a square. There's a square and you're cutting a right angle triangle, isosceles right angle triangle from each of the corners of the square. So basically you're cutting a side like this, like this, like this, and like this. So that whatever is formed here is a regular octagon. That means all the sides of this octagon have to be equal. All the sides of this octagon have to be equal. And what you're cutting is, is, is isosceles right angle triangles. If each of the side of the octagon is two units, what is the area of the square? So if the octagon has two units, if this is two, let us say, let us call this A, this B, and this is C. In triangle ABC, because this is a right angle triangle, which is isosceles, so where this angle will be equal to this angle. If this angle is X, this angle is X 45 degrees, then what will happen is that if this is equal to two, you will find that AC, square plus AB square is equal to two square such that AC is equal to AB because it is a right angle triangle, which is isosceles. That means two AC square should be equal to four or AC should be equal to root two. As a result, you'll find that this length is root two. This length is root two. So whatever happens in one of the corners has to happen in all the corners, root two, root two. So if you look at what is, what is the length of the skies of a of this square. What is the length of the sides of this square A, P, Q, R? What is the length of the sides of the square A, P, Q, R? If you look at it, what you will find is that each of the sides will be 2 plus root 2 plus root 2, which is 2 plus 2 root 2. 2 plus 2 root 2. So the area of the square is going to be 2 plus 2 root 2 whole square, which is equal to 4 plus 8 plus 8 root 2, which is equal to 12 plus 8 root 2, which is option 3. Look at question 50. Four points P, Q, R and S lie on a straight line in that order, such that P, Q is equal to R, S and Q, R is equal to 32 centimeters. So if I have a straight line, all of P, Q, R, S lie on the same straight line. P, Q, R and S lie on the same straight line, such that P, Q is equal to R, S and Q, R is given as 32 centimeters. QR is given as 32 centimeters. Point T is not on the line. Point T is not on the line. And PQ is equal to TR is equal to 20 centimeters. So point T is somewhere about here. Point T is equidistant from Q and R. From Q and R. That means T has to lie on the perpendicular bisector of Q and R. So such that this length is 20 and this length is also 20. Okay, if the perimeter of triangle PTS is double the perimeter of TQR, perimeter of triangle PTS is double the triangle the perimeter, perimeter of PQR. Triangle perimeter of PTS is double that of P, TQR. Okay, so what is the perimeter of TQR? TQR, the perimeter is 20 plus 20 plus 32, which is equal to 100, which is equal to 72. That means, if you call this side y, this will also be y. The reason being, the reason being, this is a symmetric figure. This is a symmetric figure. If t is equidistant from q and r, t also has to be equidistant from p and s. Because p and q and r and s, the lengths are equal. So in that sense of the world, if you look at it, if you look at this and you call this x and this, this area x and this region y, what will happen is that the perimeter of p, t, TPS or PTS will become X plus Y plus X plus Y plus 32, which should be equal to 
2 times of 72. So you'll get 2 times of x plus y is equal to 112. Or you can say x plus y is equal to 56. x plus y is equal to 56. So x plus y should be equal to 56 is one part of the question. And we know for sure, and we know for sure that t is equidistant from both p and s. Next thing that you need to crack over here is that if you draw this perpendicular over here, if we draw this perpendicular over here and let us call this point O, then OQ will be 16 and OR will be 16. After all, T lies on the perpendicular bisector of QR, otherwise it will not be equidistant from both the points. It will not be equidistant from the both, both the points. So if you look at triangle OQT, which is the right angle triangle, if this line is 16 and this length is equal to 20, if this is 16 and this is 20, then you can say that the height of the triangle, you can say that the height of the triangle is going to be equal to 12. You can say that the height of the triangle is going to be equal to 12. Height of the triangle is equal to 12. Now, if you look at triangle POT, which is also a right angle triangle, what can you say? You can say that PO plus OT square must be equal to PT square. So you have PO square, which is X plus 16 whole square, plus OT square, which is 12 square, should be equal to PT square. What is PT? PT is what Y? What is Y? Y is equal to 56 minus X. 56 minus X whole square. If you open this and try to find, figure this out, what will happen is that you'll be able to find out the value of X and that is what we are really interested in. We are interested in finding what is PQ. That is the value of X. So how to, what will this become? You'll, you'll get X square plus 32X plus 16 square plus 12 square is equal to 56 square minus 112X plus 56 square minus 112x plus x square. So x square, x square is the first thing that gets cancelled and I'm very happy. So x squares gets can get cancelled. As a result, what you have is 144x is equal to 56 square minus 16 square minus 12 square. 56 square, for all we know, is 3025-3136. And then you have 16 square, which is 256. And this is 144. So this is 3136 minus 3136 minus 400. 144x is equal to 3136 minus 400, which is equal to 2736. 2736, you will find that x is equal to 90. You'll find that x is equal to 19 centimeters. As a result, what will happen is that if x is equal to 19 centimeter, y will be equal to 37 centimeter. Y, y will be equal to 37 centimeter. You could have directly used either the Pythagoras theorem using the options also. For example, you have a 12 over here. So x plus 16. So if x was 19, this would become 35. As a result, you'll get 1, 3, 6, 9 as the sum of squares of 12 square plus so 12 square plus 35 square would become 1, 3, 6, 9, which is nothing but 37 square. And this would this pair of numbers, 19 and 37, would also satisfy this condition. And you could have looked at it like that also. Let's take a look at question 52 now. Two sides of a square lie on the lines x plus y equal to 3 and x plus y is equal to minus 5. Find the area of the square formed using this two lines all right so first let us try and construct the lines and see how good we are at construction first of all x plus y equal to three in this line if you put x is equal to zero y is three y is equal to zero x is three so this passes through three and three over here this is the line that looks like this okay x plus y is equal to minus five you put x is equal to zero y is equal to minus five zero comma minus five or minus five comma zero so this line passes through these two points, minus 5 and minus 5, such that both the lines are parallel. Otherwise, these cannot be sides of squares. Okay, these two lines are parallel. The question is, find the area of the square form. See, the area of the square form is a function of the side of the square. And the side of the square will be equal to the perpendicular distance, the perpendicular distance between the two lines. To find the perpendicular distance, yes, there exists a formula in coordinate geometry and stuff like that. But 
could we have done something uh, something that is very easy something that is very easy if i draw a line if i draw a line if i draw a line x is equal to y or we call it y is equal to x the slope of this line the slope of this line is 1 the slope of this line is minus 1 can i say these two lines this line y is equal to x is also perpendicular to this line and it is also perpendicular to this line so whatever is the length of this segment that is the midpoint of these two points and the midpoint of these two points should be the length of the square so if we try to figure out what is the midpoint of these two points you'll get 3 by 2 comma 3 by 2 over here as well as when you look at the midpoint of minus 5 and minus 5 over here you'll get minus 5 by 2 and minus 5 by 2 what is the distance between these two points given that this is a perpendicular angle this is a 90 degree angle already so in that case in that case what is the difference distance between them it will be equal to 3 plus 5 by 2 whole square plus 3 plus 5 by 2 whole square now that we know the coordinates you can use the distance formula in coordinate geometry so you will get 4 square plus 4 square under root of which is equal to 4 root 2 which is equal to 4 root 2 so the length of this side let us call this o and this let us call this m om is equal to 4 root 2 If O M is equal to four root two, length of the side of the square is four root two. Length of the side of the square is four root two. Area of the square is going to be four root two whole square, which is thirty two.